Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 377. What are the risk factors that you can change to improve your blood pressure? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. If you were able to see our previous podcast, we had a discussion of the new changes in the measurement or the diagnosis for hypertension that medical societies in most of the industrialized world have gone to just in the last three months. And, and, and doctors and patients are becoming aware of this. By definition, they moved a whole segment of the population from normal to prehypertensive mm -hmm. because they lowered the standard. Uh, historically, if your blood pressure was 140 over 90 uh, or less, then you were okay. Mm -hmm. Now they say that's stage one hypertension, and that's the point at which they want to uh, provide medicines uh, as well as recommend they want lifestyle to intervene. changes. They want to intervene uh, actively. Uh, now the critical blood pressure uh, numbers to watch and be aware of are 120 over 80. You mm -hmm. need to be below 120 on the systolic side and over 80 on the diastolic side. That uh, reference, systolic and diastolic, has to do with the force of the pump of the blood that's going through your blood vessels. That's the systolic. And the diastolic side is the amount of pressure that remains in your blood vessels when the heart is at rest, when, it, when it's refilling itself before the next pump. Mm -hmm. So both of those things matter over time because they, they impact different things. Uh, the, the systolic uh, can, can uh, if it's not working where it needs to be working, can uh, represent a clogged artery, like, like a clogged toilet, and the heart is trying to push harder and harder and harder, mm -hmm. and you exhaust that muscle, and eventually you, you tear it, you have a heart attack. The diastolic is the amount of pressure that, that remains in those blood vessels, and under constant states of too much pressure, they become brittle and stiff and, stiff. and build up plaque, which increases the level of pressure. So mm -hmm. All of those are bad things. Yeah. And there are some things that you can't do, and we discussed this in our previous podcast, you can't do much about but that, that do impact this, that do uh, complicate it. Things like aging and genetics and uh, stuff like that. And race. And race. So today what we want to talk about are things that you can do if you and your doctor become concerned, if you get a notice to say, well, you know, we were watching this before, but now we have to do something because the standard of measurement has changed and it's become more serious because we want to keep you alive longer, keep you healthy longer. And what we've learned is we need to do this now. This is a positive step into preventive medicine. So what you'll notice is if you went to the doctor and they never talked to you about your blood pressure, they look at it and they go, oh, yeah, this is fine. Yeah. Then now, even at the same blood pressure, now they're, they're going to go, sit, <laughs> sit you down and go, well, you have pre-hypertension. Yeah. Meaning you have to do something about your lifestyle and your diet and your exercise and maybe take supplements, but you don't need medicine. You yet. can't ignore this. And you, you can't, can't afford to ignore Yeah, this. you can't ignore it because... We'd like to prevent you from having to take hypertensive medicine. And, and that would happen if you continue your life as it is, as you age. So, so they will probably give you, tell you, tell you, tell you to lose weight and exercise more and then walk out of the room. That's usually what they have time for. <laughs> but that's, but you should take that seriously and investigate it more because that's very important. Obesity increases the risk of hypertension, heart disease, and diabetes, all things that cause heart attacks and strokes. So these are things that you have to listen to. It's not because the fact that you have hypertension is so scary. It's the fact that hypertensive hi hypertension inevitably leads to these other diseases, and those you should be afraid of. Yes, and and the one that everybody is kind of hearing about more and more in America today is is obesity, mm -hmm. uh, and it's because obesity leads to heart attack and death, and it leads to diabetes, which three. leads to heart attack. It and also death. leads to hypertension, which leads to yeah, those things. All three of these things. 
like the pawnbroker sign, you know, all three of them are dangerous and will kill you. So and you any of them that you can reduce your exposure to your risk for can help your longevity and your healthiness. So losing weight is not something just for January and February every year. <laughs> it is something, season is coming. It, it yeah. is something that you have to look at and decrease your carbohydrates, decrease your, you decrease the fact that you don't eat anything until six o'clock at night. That's really bad for your body. Right. That shuts it down and then you dump food on it and it doesn't know what to do with it. So it makes fat. So that is something that you really have to look at. And then you have to do some exercise every day. I don't care if you don't think you have time. You have time to talk on the phone, exercise and talk on the phone. You have time to text your friends, get on a recumbent bike and text your friends while you're on the recumbent bike, but exercise, do yeah. something. Walk wherever you can walk, climb yeah. stairs instead of take the elevator. You know, any little thing that you can do. Uh, I used to I laugh at a friend of mine that, that would go to the gym to work out. And she would drive around and around the parking lot for 10 minutes looking for the closest to the door. Yeah, I've seen that before. So that she could go in and work out. Mm -hmm. And I would laugh at her and say, why don't you park way out here where there are plenty of parking mm -hmm. spots? And we'll walk in <laughs> to the gym and then yeah. work out. And she wouldn't do it. She wanted to be able to. And I don't know if it's because when she finished, she wanted to fast her back to her car or I what. I don't, but I don't know, it, it but... became a joke between us for years. that she Or going to the grocery store or whatever. But she always wanted to park. That's Close. part of the problem with the industrialized societies. We drive everywhere. Yeah. We don't walk. We have segways. Segways? Segways. Yeah, mm -hmm. segways. We have th things that we don't need to put out any energy for. <laughs> I mean, we used to lean. ride bikes you have to and lean. walk. Yeah, well. <laughs> anyway, so the, so so being overweight and lack of, lack of exercise are two things that lead to hypertension. And the, the thing about exercise is it dilates the blood vessels, and it actually helps you think more. So if you think that you're working harder and it's benefiting you more to work harder for half an hour, that extra half an hour every day, then you're not really able to do it effectively if you haven't exercised that day. My son has a job at a new, he's a, he's a mm -hmm. tech engineer mm -hmm. at, at a modern engineering mm -hmm. company. And when we went out to look at his new company, his workplace, mm -hmm. he was they were proud to show us all of their desks are convertible from sitting to standing and anywhere in between. Mm -hmm. oh, so I love they that. want them to stand for mm -hmm. a while and work and sit mm -hmm. for a while and work and stand for a while. Because there are computers all day, and that's really difficult. Sitting all you. day will kill you. Mm -hmm. It will. O over time. The accumulated effects of that are damaging. Mm -hmm. And So let me say something about being retired. Being retired means you don't have a schedule <laughs> anymore. So what you do is if, we, if you don't have a schedule, you just sit. And sit and sit because there's nothing to motivate you to go do anything except to make a meal unless you're doing, I mean, unless you put a schedule in your life, which is very important to keep you active and to keep your brain working, you need to have time set aside to exercise, time set aside to sit, time set aside to work around the house, not just sit, stand, sit, stand. That's, that's not going to be enough for you to stay healthy. And that's what happens to us when we don't have a, a, a superimposed schedule by somebody else that gives us a schedule and says, you have to do this, which is what happens when you're working. Right. So you should, for your brain's sake and your heart's sake, set up a schedule. And every day at this time you exercise. And every day at this time you talk on the phone. And every, I mean, it, it sounds... It makes it easier to do if you schedule it and habituate it. Right. So you, you want to do that as much as you can. That's in your own best interest. And that helps that. your blood pressure, but it also helps you stay alive and keep your brain active longer. So there are components to obesity that we've done other podcasts on, and we'll refer you to some of those. Uh, reduction of sugar intake, and, and especially in pre-processed or prepared mm -hmm. foods. Uh, they put so much of that. And a lot of it you don't even know is sugar. It's, it's corn syrup. But mm -hmm. the corn syrup is all sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Americans are addicted to sugar from corn syrup that pervades the processed food diets right. that well, we I've, eat. I think I've said that when I, I tell patients that I'm mon managing their, their uh, food intake and I look at their, I look at them, they've brought in this huge sugared soda thing and they're yes. trying to lose weight. And I'm like, you know, you really, you're going to have to just take that out of your life if you want to save your life because that is just corn syrup and oh, colored yes. water and they look at me like i have just taken away their 
their last friend. You drive through rural areas it's of, so of sad. America and you see people with what they call big gulps, which are like mm-hmm. 40 but it's ounce not just rural. sodas. Well, that's where, in my experience, I've mm-hmm. seen it the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's so dangerous and you need to not do that and not addict yourself or train yourself to habituation of I've got to have a soda in the car. I can't get in the car. It's addictive. Going six blocks. That's why it's addictive, it to have, addictive to have that kind of sugar in your diet. I mean, it makes you want more. That's basically how addictions work. Addictions work. So you need more to get less of a payoff. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that just makes us hypertensive and fat. But the other thing is the salt in, in processed foods is huge. Right. And you may just see MSG, but MSG is salt. And salt increases your blood pressure. Mono, so sodium, glutamate. glutamate right. Yeah. So you can't you can't eat a processed food without a bunch of salt in it. So that's something that you have to be aware of. Fresh foods and simple foods are the best. And stay away from salt. Don't add salt to your food. Uh-uh. It's already going to be added in anything you buy that's prepared. If it's in a can, it's already going to have mm-hmm. salt in it as a preservative. Mm-hmm. Uh, Some have sugar and, as well. And or a taste enhancer. So, it's and, best. And so there's an adjustment you have to learn. I mean, you, you'll eat these foods and say, oh, they're too bland. Mm-hmm. But that you can change that over time. Your taste you, changes. So yeah. you don't find it to be bland. If you haven't eaten that type of food for, say, 10 days to two weeks, it won't taste bland anymore. So, so, so we talked about two of the things. There, there are a series of things that we want to mention that you have some control over and you can do something about to regulate your risk of hypertension. One we've talked about is obesity and the other we've talked about is exercise. Third thing we want to talk about is overconsumption of alcohol, yeah. which doesn't mean that you can't drink, but the, the, the recommendations are for an adult male, uh, five ounces of wine uh, a day, one glass. Uh, and no, it's actually two drink, two glasses two, two, for so, men, yeah, and one glass for women because of the size difference. And and that's it. Any kind of alcohol or red wine over? I mean, no. red I mean, red about. wine has always gotten a really good recommendation for. I think it's. I'm not exactly sure what part of red wine is better than the than white wine or alcohol, but um, all alcohol is a poison. Mm-hmm. And poisons um, dominate your liver, and so your liver can't yeah, we get were, rid of anything else. We were having... Uh, Not that I, I mean, I drink wine as well, but I mean, I don't drink a lot. We were having a discussion a few weeks back with our engineer friend of ours who, who was curious about how, uh, how uh, was it, vodka? What, vodka or yeah. gin had uh, carbs or no yeah, carbs? Yeah, whether they were carbs or no carbs, and I had always been taught they were carbs. Right. And then, so we then did some investigation, and... It's not a carb, a fat, or a protein, which is all foods. It's a poison. It's a poison. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's categorized as. So yeah. so the reason it's a poison is because it dominates the liver, uh, your liver enzymes, and it, your body has to get rid of the alcohol before it gets rid of anything else because it's a poison. So your, your liver does nothing else, and it makes you hypoglycemic, not hyperglycemic, and insulin resistant. Insulin resistance is what gives us fat. Okay. So you want to watch, uh, be aware of, and, and this is not a moral argument. This is a medical statement about m- balancing your level of alcohol consumption. Because it increases your blood pressure. Yes. Not decreases like everybody says it does. And then, and then ta- uh, tobacco consumption mm-hmm. is another one. Tobacco, nicotine itself, uh, whether you chew it or you smoke it, um, causes uh, your vessels to develop plaque and, and not be so elastic. It becomes stiff. And hypoxia, which when you're smoking uh, nicotine in a cigarette hy- or a cigar, hypoxia is the carbon monoxide that it produces in your lungs. That actually causes damage to your blood vessels, and it causes them to... to um, constrict and they stay constricted if you smoke all day so that that is really bad for your blood pressure and and over time it's not just your blood pressure but your skin too i mean you see well, people everything. that have been lifelong smokers and it's like their skin is tanned from the smoking if we can't motivate you by trying to say we can keep you alive we'll motivate you by your vanity yeah. because smoking really may i mean makes you're gonna skin. be ugly yeah. people come in and go what can i do about all this creepy skin i'm like well you smoke for 30 years I mean, it's very hard to fix that. Yeah. You know, we, we use lasers and stuff, but it's not going to look like somebody who didn't smoke for 30 years. Yes. So that's, so vanity, I'll, I'll, I'll use either one to get to somebody to do the right thing and take care of themselves. All right. So. Um, stress. 
Stress. Yeah. If, if you can moderate the amount of stress that you carry around day to day, if you, mm-hmm. how much do you worry? How much pressure are you under? How fast are you trying to go? If you're a type A personality, we, we were discussing that before we started filming today. Uh, type A personalities can have a heart attack and say, oh, my God, I have to change. And they will change for a little while, typically. And then they fall back into a lifelong pattern of being type A and they start embracing more stress, mm-hmm. more commitments, more expectations, more no. performance demands, my job. If you, if you can't say no, you might be type A. Yeah. <laughs> they fall so, over dead. Yeah. yeah, but but that kind of stress constricts your blood vessels as well and causes causes your uh, blood pressure to go up. Blood pressure going up causes plaque and, and yeah. other diseases. So so that's something you that it's hard to tell an audience of many people what to do with their stress. It's something that if you if you can tolerate yoga, that's a good thing to do with stress. If you like to, I mean, you should do something you like every day that decreases your stress. I mean, enjoy, not just, I mean, if it's playing an instrument or singing or, or um, watching a movie. I mean, you should have something you enjoy every day, and that usually drops your stress level. Well, there are a lot of recommendations that people like me will make, that yes. th- therapists will tell you. Okay. You know, find something to laugh about. Laugh every mm-hmm. day. If you A good belly laugh every day will keep you alive longer. It reduces mm-hmm. your stress. Meditation, <laughs> uh, what we call a 10-minute vacation or a 10-minute nap, mm-hmm. you know, power napping. But if, if you can sit somewhere in your car, if you're driving point A to point B to make a sales call, if you can take five minutes and just close your eyes and do deep breathing, Take slow, steady breaths. A five count in, hold it for five, exhale for five. If you can regulate your breathing, do five or ten deep breaths, which reoxygenates your blood supply, mm-hmm. but it also lowers your level of tension and stress, and it'll lower your blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, all so of these things are win win. Yeah, those are good So advice. there are That's things that you can do to moderate your stress, even if there are still. Uh, critically important things to take care of. Okay. The way that you approach them, the way that you attack them, you know, work smart instead of work hard. Mm-hmm. And, and, and those are learnable skills and techniques that you can do. If you're not very efficient because you're tired or you're stressed out, like, then you're not doing as much work as you think you are. You're just spending more hours doing it. Run around with, like a chicken with his head cut off. Mm-hmm. Now, that's an old country saying. I grew up hearing that. Mm-hmm. And when I was about 12 years old, my father... Uh, required me to take a live chicken and prepare it for dinner. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And we... Oh, no, 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 no. I can't do that. Chickens will run around the yard without a head. Thank you. With blood pumping up and arms flapping. and, and Brett. It's pretty... Uh, okay, so now we're going to talk about... Now you've stressed me out. Oral birth control pills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, this is one that... Um, the people who have a, a family history of high blood pressure often will elevate their blood pressure, even if they're young and healthy, their blood pressure may go up when um, you start taking oral birth control pills. So if that's you, your gynecologist does your blood pressure every time you come in because that's one of the things they're looking for. So your OBGYN will be looking for somebody who, oh, we just put you on birth control pills. Oh, your blood pressure's up. We have to find another form of birth control. So, or, or a different type, but usually it's a different kind, like um, a marine IUD or something like that because that's not good for you to have hypertension from just taking birth control pills. Okay, so moving from those into like food awareness and and diet awareness Mm -hmm. specifically, Mm -hmm. there are things that we know that can have an impact like calcium and magnesium, Mm -hmm. uh, vitamin D. You were telling me that that especially for African American populations, vitamin D is is very critically important. So this this is something that's in um, it it is opposite what you might think. But the darker your skin is, the less vitamin C or vitamin D you absorb from the sun. So I absorb less than probably you. Yeah. So, and the darker the skin, the less you absorb. So it is very important for people who have dark skin to take vitamin D for a multitude of reasons. But one of the reasons is because low vitamin D causes high blood pressure. So that may even be a factor in why American... African Americans have more more high blood pressure yes. and and heart disease. So, one of the things you have to do is get your <clears throat> get your blood level to a hundred, not forty or thirty, whatever the lab says is normal. 
that's just normal for the average Joe. But if you have dark skin, you need to have a much higher vitamin D level. Okay. So that's very important. <clears throat> and that will help. And that will help bring down your blood pressure without medicines. All right. I, I don't mean stop your medicine. I mean, it will, you could decrease your dose. Iodine? Iodine, K2. iodine is very important for your thyroid. And if you're, you're low, low, low thyroid, you'll have low blood pressure. If you have high thyroid, you have high blood pressure. But sometimes in the middle, you'll have hypertension without iodine. And thyroids don't run without iodine. So we suggest taking iodorol or eating uh, kelp salads. Or, I mean, they have dried These kelp. high in iodine. High in iodine every day to uh, improve your... Uh, both your vascular tone and your thyroid. And what's vitamin K2? What, what is vitamin K2 is um, usually think of vitamin K as one of the of the um, vitamins that helps you clot. But vitamin K2 is specifically um, a vitamin that helps bone density, but it also helps um, high blood pressure. So it decreases the uh, the response of your body to stress and all these other things we told you about to make plaque. So it decreases plaque. So we, so vitamin K2 is, is something that we recommend for our patients to take who have high blood pressure or have it in their families. Now, what everybody tells you, especially women, is that you should take calcium. Now, America's taking too much calcium. We have a lot of calcium in our diet anyway with milk products and deep green leafy vegetables. But when we take extra calcium and we aren't giving our body something to make more more uh, bone like Fosamax or estrogen or testosterone, then the calcium just runs around and looks for some place to deposit. So it deposits in the blood vessels. So we're taking too much calcium. It's looking for a place to go, and then it stiffens our blood vessels. It so, build up the plaque. Yeah, it bu helps build up plaque. So that's not actually... A great idea. If you are taking estrogen, you can take them, and you're not drinking any milk products, and you can take a moderate amount of uh, calcium, like um, 600 to 600 milligrams a day. So, so with milk products, we should say ice cream, cheese, uh, dairy. Yeah, any kind of general. any kind of anything made with milk, ricotta cheese, um, which is like which is like cottage cheese. Anything that's a milk product has uh, has that in it has calcium in it. Okay, so what we were talking about today are things that you can do through the choices that you make to increase the likelihood that you can control your blood pressure, keep it from getting high, keep it from becoming hypertensive. Some of those things are physical things that you can do, like lose some weight, uh, regulate the amount of salt that you ingest, the amount of sugar that you ingest, exercise regularly. Some of them are things that you need an awareness of. Am I at an increased level of risk, say as an African-American or somebody with darker skin, uh, that I don't get enough vitamin D? Or do I live in an iodine sink like the mid western part of the United mm -hmm. States where there's no iodine in the ground and so it's not in our foods from farming mm -hmm. so we have to add it as a supplement so there are supplements that you can take uh, regulate your calcium regulate your iodine regulate your magnesium there are things that you can think about and that you and your doctor in consultation can plan a strategy for you so that you can maximize your opportunity to regulate your blood pressure and avoid becoming at risk to getting all these diseases like kidney diseases and diabetes and obesity that and heart kill you. disease and heart disease and so you need you need to save your life now and not have to backpedal later when you're really sick it it, it would it would be worth it <laughs> i mean really worth it Hopefully. to to do this now it's not really it's not really hard to follow these rules you don't want to do it after you had a heart attack <laughs> after you've damaged that muscle that's right. so critical it'll to never survival. be right again it's never perfect Pre preventive after medicine you've damaged is the direction it. we're moving yeah in. we want you to be preventive and not be sick and to live your life healthy thank, thank you, you for listening email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com you can find the biobalance healthcast on itunes and on youtube for more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.